Hello everyone and welcome back. Recently I've seen a lot of discussion about using Inertia JS and Rails. I've had questions about this over the years. I've seen a couple of Reddit posts recently saying that more people need to cover this. So I'm trying to do my part. I'm using this Evil Martians uh, blog post here. And we're going to step through some of their instructions as well as the readme here for the Inertia Rails contribution, which as you can tell is also built by Evil Martians. So they're probably the people to listen to. So how do we do this? Well. First thing we need to do is create a new Rails app, but they want us to skip JavaScript when we do that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We can call this video. Then we're just going to do dash dash skip dash JS, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll run this. As for what we're going to be building, we're just going to build a quick little post scaffold with inertia. So first thing we're going to do is install inertia. And we're going to do that using Tailwind uh, as well, just to make sure that we have like everything set up here. Okay, so first step, we need to do a bundle add for Vite underscore Rails. If you've never used Vite before for like a front end app, this is probably my favorite tool for JavaScript land. Just so fast and so easy to use. Then we're going to go ahead and do a bundle exec Vite install. That's going to do some stuff here. Uh, and then once this is done, we're going to do a code dot to open this up in VS Code. So there we can see, did a bunch of stuff. And now we're good to go. I have to figure out where VS Code is opening on my computer because I can't see it. Oh, it opened up behind RuneScape. I'm uh, currently busy mining. <laughs> don't, don't tell the other viewers. Okay, so that creates this, this file for us. We get a proc file here, which runs Vite. It runs web, which means you're going to need to gem install Foreman or you can gem install Overmind. Now, normally I use Foreman for this with like a a forming command, but here I'm going to be doing overmind. So I have like this overmind start dash f proc file dot dev. This would just be foreman start dash f proc file dot dev, I think, if you were doing it that way. Okay, we have that up. Now let's go ahead and let's add tailwind. So we're just going to copy this line. We're going to hit enter. And we're going to do a npx uh, tailwind CSS init afterwards. So first step install tailwind post CSS auto prefixer. Then we're going to initialize tailwind. It's going to create an initializer for us. But then when we come into the Tailwind config, where we have these module.exports, we need to copy and paste here so that we can have the content here. Now, if you've ever done a Rails new, I don't know, like example, maybe, and then done like the dash C Tailwind, uh, it's going to give you a setup kind of like this. So this is pretty much the same thing. All right, so we have that. Let me close out of that. Now we need to import these. Now, I don't get this in entry points application.css file, so I actually have to create this. So I come into app front end, and then right here I have entry points. So I right click on the entry points folder, new file, application.css, import these, and then you want to import this application.css somewhere as well, uh, which we'll handle in a bit. So right here it says, uh, don't forget your Vite style sheet tag. So we have to come into app views, application.html.erb. And then we need to include this. Now, this is already here in this comment, Vite uh, TypeScript tag, but we need the uh, style sheet tag instead. So we're going to come in here. We're going to say an equals Vite style sheet tag for application. And then if you end up changing like TypeScript or something, uh, if you're using JSX or TSX, you want to make sure you're doing that. Here we're fine with just the Vite style sheet tag, though, I think. And we can save that. Okay, so now we're ready for inertia, allegedly. Uh, if we try to run this, we'll do a bundle add for inertia underscore rails dash contrib. It'll take a second, and then we can do the uh, inertia install command. The inertia install command is where we're going to pick our front end framework. So maybe we want to use uh, React or Vue or Svelte or something else right here, React, Vue, Svelte. If you just hit enter, it'll default to React. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Of course, all the other versions of this are going to be the exact same. It's one of the nice parts about Vite. It's similar if you just use Vite outside of Rails. It just asks you what framework you want to use and then just sets it up for you, which I think is really cool. We should probably get something like that for like all the big frameworks. Just let you switch between like Laravel and, and Rails by just choosing an option. That'd be pretty sick. Uh, it'd also probably take up a ton of storage space, be incredibly inefficient, but a guy can dream, right? Okay, so now that we have that, that, that part is done. So it's telling us if we start our server, we can go to slash inertia example. So let's do a Rails S. We run a Rails S and we come over here to localhost port 3000, which is what it's going to start. We can see we have a Rails app. And then it's said to go to slash inertia uh, dash example, I think. Just like that. So now we're going to run into the bug that kind of made this a little bit annoying. It tells us Vite Ruby can't find entry point slash inertia.js. Uh, last build failed, can't do this, blah, 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 blah. And then down here you can see that it's running into an issue with the .js extension for the 
uh, which file is it? It's, it's the post CSS config. So if we come over here, we scroll down, we should find a post CSS config.js. So what you're going to do is you're just going to change this to dot CJS. There's probably a better way to fix this, but this is just the easiest way that I found. And we're going to run another Rails S. We're going to come over here. We're going to refresh. And there you go. We're now using uh, inertia plus Vite plus React. Count to zero, blah, 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 blah. Click that. Other thing you can do if you want to is you can come over here and you can do your overmine command. And that'll start two different servers. And then the this one right here is going to be available at 3036, which just looks like this. Uh, but the Rails S is good enough for now if we need that. So we'll just sw switch back over to here. So we have the Rails S. We can come over to this folder. Now, how do we actually generate scaffolds with this? So to do that, we need to use the inertia generator. Oh, yeah. And there's a couple more examples here. I'd recommend reading through this, this blog post because they're going to cover a lot more than I am. I'm really just here to get you up and running. Uh, so they kind of show you how all this works, but we're going to do the Rails generator. So we're going to do a Rails G inertia scaffold, and we'll do a uh, we'll do a post, the title of type string, a body of type text. Uh, we can do their little published at of type date time, and maybe a I don't know published uh, boolean, something like that. Go ahead and run that, and then we can do a bin slash dev. Oh, wait, we don't have been so uh, let's do a Rails S again. Sorry. OK, so we need this. Come over here, refresh the page. Uh, it tells us we have migrations pending, which is good. That means everything's working. I have to go back to mining, as you can see here. My shooting star depleted. Uh, and we come over here to slash post, just like we normally would. And now we have a post uh, scaffold in our application. So we can come over here, test case. We have a published at a little drop down selector. We can click published, click create post. That's all fine and good, right? Let's go back to the post page. But if we come over here to our views, you'll see we still don't have any views. So we just ran the generator. We have all this stuff working, and uh, we don't have any views. So where are they? Well, these get put into our front end. So over here in our front end, we have pages. And now you can see it's uh, structured just like you would expect. So all of our routes are in folders instead of a file because we hate ourselves. In the middle of my yapping in this video, I accidentally said that the front end pages uh, post right here that this was how the routing was done. The routing is actually done in your routes file still. So your resources post is how you get to slash posts. This right here is just your front end stuff. It's similar to having like a uh, post folder inside of your views. Sometimes I just do some yapping in these videos and I just wanted to catch it so that you guys don't think that I'm, uh, you know, lying to you. Uh, I'm just incredibly incompetent sometimes. Sorry about that. We can come into the index.js. We can see all of this is just in a quick little react return inside of a index function, right? So if we want to, you know, change this a bit, uh, we can come in here to the posts for the, uh, I don't know, the H1, put the word test in there or something, refresh the page. We can see post test. That looks pretty fancy, cool stuff. Uh, what if we want to do something else though? So let's say um, I should probably undo this so that we can get our bold back because I put W's in there. Let's say we want to uh, maybe render something from the controller, right? Like what do the controllers look like now? Well, if we come up here to the controllers, we can check in the post controller and you can see here, this is going to look a little bit different, right? We still do at post at all, but then instead of like, you know, just kind of chill in there, we have to render our inertia stuff. So we do post slash index because that's the, the path we have to go to, right? Post slash index in our front end pages post index and you got to make sure that these are capitalized probably otherwise it'll maybe be unhappy uh, and then we have to pass it the props if you have if you've ever used react this will seem familiar to you we're passing props we got our posts for each post we got to do post.map and then we got to serialize the post etc so uh, serialized post happens down here so if you add more fields you can add them right here then you have to do your post params as well so like if you want to do another one that just says like i don't know viewed You'd have to do a viewed and then you have to do a viewed down here just in case you want to show the user that the post was viewed right uh and then in your in your show page you would do like i don't know post viewed for the user right but okay so this is fine but how do we pass something else like what if i want to come in here and i just want to do like i don't know uh, at test equals hello world right and i want to come over here and i want to do something like uh another h1 that just has our uh at test right so let's do this You'll see we're already getting an error, but I'll refresh just so you can believe me. Uh, and then this will go boom. Nothing's working. Why isn't stuff working? Well, the reason why stuff isn't working is because we can't use these variables anymore. So we have to come over to our post controller. We have to actually pass these in. So we have our uh, little post thing right here. Uh, what we can do is we can just treat this like anything else. And we can just say test. 
hello world, just like that. So we're doing a comma. And then if we have more arguments, we can come down here and just, you know, name the rest of them. Like, I don't know, red uh, dog, something like that, right? Come over to our index page. And now in here, we can just do test because that's the name of our variable. Come over here, refresh the page. And then hopefully this stops going boom. It's because I forget how this works. Uh, we have our test right here. We still have to say in our props that we are taking an A test. I don't know what's wrong with me. Let's refresh the page uh, and then now we're good. So now you can see right here, our second H1 has hello world inside of it, which is this one right here. Uh, and we can, you know, do something like this equals uh, font dash bold text dash 2XL, something like that. Do that, refresh the page, close this. And you can see now that's bolded properly. So again, it, it's basically the same thing you're used to. You come into your models if you want to, your model, your post. You can do all your post validation or model stuff in here. You can do your testing. You can come into your routes and your config. And you have your resources for your posts. And those are going to get mapped. And that's why you can go to slash post. Also, you have your uh, you know front end layout inside of your pages, inside of your posts, etc. So you just pop in here and you can change all this stuff. Okay, so that's basically all I wanted to talk about here. It's just a quick little, you know, how do you get this up and running and working? And then from there, it's it's largely up to you to figure out how this works. I'd recommend checking out this blog post. I'll have a link to it in the video description down below, as well as this GitHub repo. Um, not not really my place of comfort. I'm not a big inertia person, not because I don't like it. It's just I've never used it before, but I probably end up just using Hotwire for most stuff and then moving to uh, something that's less Rails related if I'm going to use a full stack or a split stack solution. Uh, but yeah, if this is something you want to do, maybe check out this tool. It might make your life a little bit easier. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.